Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR, and in this video we're going to be using Ableton Live 10's brand new Wavetable synth to demonstrate how we can make a synth patch from scratch. So firstly let's create a new MIDI track, and then we can place the Wavetable synth onto that MIDI track, and you'll hear we'll get the default preset, so I'll just play a few notes. And we're going to take it from this initial preset and we're going to turn it into a Hoover style detuned bass patch. So all we've got to do for this is we're going to go for something that's got quite a lot of harmonic content, so we'll go for our saw waves, we're going to use both of our oscillators. And then what we're going to do is detune one of our oscillators a little bit. We can already start to hear that classic super saw sound as we're stacking these saws and detuning them on top of each other. Let's now add some sub so we can choose for two octaves below, one or the same octave. We can then creep in some of that tone as well just to brighten up that sub. And then I'm going to use a filter just to remove some of that low end. So we'll cut this off just around 100 hertz. And because we're in a serial configuration, I'm going to use filter 2 just to cut off some of the top as well. And we could possibly automate or modulate this later on. So finally with the filters we could also choose a filter type and add some drive if we wanted to. And then we need to think about how we're going to get some modulation and some movement into this sound. But before we do that, let's just quickly push up our amp envelope so we've got a full sustain and we'll lengthen the release as well so it sort of washes out and lasts for maybe a second and a half. So to get a bigger and more detuned sound, let's now modulate this oscillator to wavetable position. So to send it to an LFO, let's first break it out so it's full screen. So we're in sound design mode, and then we can simply send this to LFO 1. We can now set the LFO rate, and we can see how this is going to have an impact visually by looking at our oscillator 2 position. I'm just going to dial back that amount slightly because it's a bit too much. So just to explain what we could also do here is we could also use LFO2 on that same oscillator 2 position as well. And if we had a different rate, we could actually get that to really slowly modulate, whereas we've also got LFO1 modulating really fast as well, and that's going to give us a combination of a different type of modulation as well. But in this case, I'm actually just going to use LFO2 for the position of oscillator 1. Also going to take the LFO re-triggers off and this just means when I hit a note it's not going to re-trigger the cycle of the LFO each time it's just going to carry on looping in the background. Next what we're going to do is a bit of pulse width so just so you can hear what this does that this one's pulse width as well. If we do this really fast this is going to give us the effect we want. So pulse width Good, so we've now managed to get ourselves a nice fuzzy and detuned sound, which is the typical starting point for this sort of hoover bass. And other things we can now look at doing is trying to get a pitch drop into the equation, because that's quite a classic part of the hoover sound as well. So we could do that by setting this to mono and using the glide function and by jumping from a high note to a low note. So I'll just show you this here. So as you can tell, that's quite a classic hoover sound and you can really start to tell what the patch is supposed to be now. So that's one way to do it, but it's a little bit messy. So instead of using that, I'm going to do a pitch bend and we're going to use an envelope. So we'll go for envelope free. So what we'll do is we'll push the pitch all the way up. So we'll set this to either 12 or 24 semitones. And now it's just a case of going through the envelope's time and slope settings and getting the pitch right. Push that up even higher if you want, we'll go 24. 
And the final bit of icing on the cake now is just to look at the unison and what we can do is we can give this a much more powerful sound. So if we listen without and with and then what we could also do as another little touch is we could maybe get this filter to automate so it's going so for that I'm going to use envelope 2 to the cutoff. Go for 100% to start with. That's about right, but we'll start at about 3k and it's just going to move up. It just gives us a little bit of fizz to the end of the sound as well. So now we've pretty much got the patch complete and we could add little things to it all day long using this matrix, but we're actually get on to recording something in. So the last thing I want to show you is just this time parameter if you've not already seen it. So we can turn this hoover sound into a pretty convincing laser. If we close that down, let's now look at recording something into this breakdown section here. So let's just rename this first to hoover. And we'll put a bit of reverb onto the sound as well. We'll just go for the generic stock reverb plugin. And finally, we'll just turn the level down a little bit because we were quite hot coming out of our final device just because we've got a lot of voices, a lot of detuning going on, which has bumped the level right up and we don't want it to wreck our mix. So whilst we're here with our metronome, we've got it set to only be on whilst we're recording. Set the click to classic and one bar counting. And then we can just hit record and play straight in with the keyboard. I'm just going to clean up the sound a little bit by doing a bit of multitasking. So whilst I'm recording in, I'm just going to drop on two compressors. We're going to set one compressor to sidechain the kick, and then I'm going to set another compressor to sidechain the filtered kick. So no matter what happens throughout this song, as long as one of those two kicks are playing, then we're going to get sidechain compression on this sound, and it's just going to stop us from essentially clipping the signal when the kick and this hoover sound plays at the same time. So it gives us a little bit more headroom. So just for your information, the reason I'm putting this side chain on the hoover is that the hoover bass, the bass sound itself and the kick all have a lot of high energy content, which is in the low bass frequencies and the low mids as well. And it's all fighting for the same space. So that's why we've got to treat them to get out of each other's way. So you can see here and we can also hear we've got quite a strong side chain there. So we're just going to back off that compression a little bit. It doesn't have to be quite so overpowering. Now all of our low end instruments are sitting quite nicely together and we've also managed to gain a little bit of groove from that pumping side chain as well. So what I've done is I've just shifted up that last note that's on the dropper or on the chorus. We'll just see how that sounds, do a little bit of experimentation. It might work, it might not work, but experimentation is key and you always find a happy mistake every now and then. So always remember that and try not to get too caught up in the technicalities. So let's just let this play out and see how it goes from this breakdown section into the chorus. Remember, it's not properly been mixed yet, so we don't have to get too carried away. At this stage, good is good enough. Okay, so 
I'm not liking the length of this note and also I think it sounds much better in the lower octave. So we'll play that again. So I'm going to cut this video off at this stage, but what I'd usually do at this part is I'd loop up the area that I'm working on and just keep making fine-tuned adjustments to things like the pitch envelope till it's absolutely perfect. But I'm sure you've learned a lot about the Wavetable synth and all of its features in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we're going to be covering the brand new audio device, Echo.